In this House of Logic video, we're going to demonstrate how you can use CloudInit on Windows um, with Terraform um, can, together with Proxmox uh, to create new Windows VMs on Proxmox um, with automatic IP address configuration. Now, what you'll actually need to do in order to do this, um, I've already made a video about how to set up CloudInit for Windows, and I advise you to go and start there. So in essence, what you need to do because of some limitations around um, cloud in it or cloud base in it as a version for Windows is that you actually need to go and specify what the administrator password is. And that needs to go in the unattend.xml file as part of the cloud base installation. So when you've got that configured, um, you then basically need to sysprep um, the machine. I've already done that. Um, so I've done that already, as I say, and I've cloned the virtual machine and turned it into this cloud init template. So this has got the um, administrator and the password 123 password set. It's not specified here in the cloud init settings. Um, but what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to clone this template and use um, administrator and password 123 as the credentials. And then I should be able to do everything else I want to with it. So in the rest of my environment over on Proxmox, I've got um, what I've dubbed the Terraform Master uh, virtual machine, which I'm connected to using VS Code. And I've set up already, in fact, you can see I have run this once before um, because I've already got the Terraform files in place. I've set up the Terraform um, main.tf file. And this has got, from going from the top, um, the details of the provider, how to connect to the Proxmox instance, and then it's got details about the actual resource. So the resource we're going to use um, is going to be called Terraform WinVM um, within uh, Proxmox. And we're specifying the target node. We're not worried about the pool. We do need to know the actual template name to use. And we're going to tell it to use the, uh, the Chemo agent. And also that the agent timeout, we're going to give it a very generous timeout of half an hour. And then basically what we're doing in terms of the hardware is to specify the same details that we've got on the existing um, image. So looking at that, if we go into the hardware details, you can see that the main boot disk is IDE 1, and we've got IDE 2 is the cloud init drive, and we've got a serial port connected. Uh, there's also a SCSI controller as well, although I'm not sure how much that's actually having a bearing if it's IDE, but it's still, um, well, that's what we've got it set to. And uh, we're going to set the network um, details and the bridge um, that we want to use. We don't want to use a VLAN tag, so I've commented that out, but I've left it there as part of the example. And then we're going to specify the IP address. And this is kind of the killer thing here. Um, this is the proof that this actually works successfully, because if we just set it to DHCP, Windows have come up with DHCP anyway. Um, however, by specifying this address, we can be confident that this actually works. So we've got the serial port um, details, but also finally here we have the CI user, the cloud init user, and the cloud init password. And these are the same details that we've just pumped into that um, unattended XML file. So with all of that in place, then what we need to do within here uh, in the Terraform directory is we're gonna, we would do Terraform init, which is already uh, been done. And then we can then do Terraform apply. And then this should start the cloning process. After I could, obviously after I say yes, and what we should then see within here we've got, uh, we've called it Terraform Win VM, um, which is this machine number um, VMID one two four, which has just started cloning as you can see down the bottom here. So we're going to let that cloning process run through, and then at the end of it um, we'll have a look at the machine. Something that's worth noting is that it may require um, more than one reboot in order for this to actually go through successfully. Um, so realistically, um, what you shouldn't be expecting is to see um, that the IP address comes up in the summary details correctly immediately. So it may take a couple of reboots, which will be automated through cloud in it for it to come up properly. So we may or may not catch that as part of this video, but we'll uh, we'll give it a go and we'll try to catch it if we can. OK, so um, we will leave this um, recording here and uh, see what we come up with. And when the process finishes, we will check that we can successfully log in um, to the machine using those credentials. OK, well, I'll catch you on the far side. Okay, so as you can see here, um, the machine has finished cloning and being created and it has come up with an address and it's not currently the right address. So if we click on the console, 
we should be able to see um, what's going on. Whoops. Mouse has gone to sleep. So we don't need to see the Terraform view anymore and we can resize this again. So yeah, there we go. So it's got an address or it's picked an address previously and it's doing at least one reboot. We'll click back on there and we'll uh, we'll leave that for a few more minutes and just see how uh, that gets on. Okay, so I've just managed to catch the reboot there um, on the machine. So on the console, I didn't actually log in that time. Um, so this, I think, is the uh, the second reboot. So I think this is where it should come back up with the correct IP address. So I'll hop it over to the summary page and see what happens. Okay, so there we can see it has come up with the IP address as per the Terraform file of 192.168.5.220. And if we go into the console, then we should be able to uh, log in using the administrator username and password 123 as the password. So let's try it. Okay, so that has been successful. Um, one other thing that it is worth doing, so in a PowerShell window, um, what I can do, and I've already set up the credential for this, um, is I'm going to try to connect to the machine. So I've already set up a credential object um, with, uh, hang on one sec, um, with the username and password uh, 123 um, you, uh, details. So let's just drag this across and change the IP address. So the cred object, you just use the get credential and then um, type in the details. So if we go 5.220 on there and give that a go, if we're lucky, and we say that that is a, um, a private network, I might be jumping the gun a little bit with this. No, I'm not. Okay, so we, are, we have managed to use um, PowerShell remote management to connect in um, and that's great news because that means then we can use other tools such as Ansible to then do any further um, um, actual operating system setup. So in, in documents what we'll do is we'll just type um, let's just do um, uh, okay content equals blah and we're going to take content if I, oops and we're going to pipe it out to set content path dot slash test dot txt in the administrator documents directory. So if we go into there now, we should find a file. And there is test. There we go. Um, so yeah, that proves that the machine comes up. It comes up with the right IP address and it's in a state where it's ready for PowerShell remoting so you can do any further um, configuration that you want to do with it using something like Ansible. Um, that's about it for this video. I hope that this has been useful. Um, and uh, if you liked it, please, um, please like and subscribe to the channel. Um, otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.